This is me. In my 20 years at Intel, I've been to more cities than I can count in about 40 countries around the world. I lead a team of social scientists, anthropologists, sociologists, psychologists, and it's our job around Intel to figure out what people and technology and culture is like and how it's changing over time. Today, in my five New York Minutes of Fame, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about our perspective on people, technology, and big data. And I'm going to start with a story, a very short story. Once upon a time, there were monks, and monks lived in monasteries. And in those monasteries, all day long, they copied books, one from another, letter by letter, word by word, book by book. And now you know why the Capuchin monks invented cappuccinos, and a lot of monks started brewing beer. <laughs> Fast forward, and for the last 50 or 60 years, what we've been doing is actually transcribing everything that was analog into digital form. We've been taking music and movies and magazines and putting them into digital form, but also reputations and relationships and revolutions into digital form. And now you know why we drink a lot of coffee and drink a lot of beer. But it's all those data that comprise the big data opportunity. It's all those data that give us the big data that we have. And what we, what we see in our work is the notion of something we call the personal data economy as one opportunity to pursue in the big data, in the, in, you know, in the big data space as a whole. If you think about an economy, it's a system of exchange. It, it, it's a system of exchange where you create value, and the, the system of exchange we're talking about here is where you can trade personal data for value. And that's what I want to talk about a little bit today. Kind of like the maker movement was built on having a lot of commodity parts and basic uh, computing units and a lot, of, a lot of talent, a wide array of talent, the uh, personal data economy movement will be built on having a wide range of developers, right? the ability to circulate data in a secure fashion, right? and access to personal data. And we're going to talk about three opportunities that we see emerging out of that here. The first is hyper-individualism. This, this is a string of Christmas lights. They're made by a company in Australia called Moore's Cloud. It's a new company. It's actually Moore's Law. That's probably why I actually found it. Um, these lights, seven meters long, LED lights, 5,000 Pantone colors, programmable by an app. That's pretty personalizable. That's individual. If we can individualize Christmas lights, we can individualize most anything. And that's where we're going to get the value from big data in thinking about truly personal computing. And it only happens if personal data can circulate, can be combined in interesting ways, can relate in interesting ways with other data through clever algorithms built by many of you. The second opportunity that we see, and simultaneously with hyper-individualism, is hyper-collectivity. Collectives are groups of people that form for a particular purpose. And up until now, we've been limited by the people we know and the places that we are. But we know that we can reach further than that. And when we talk to college students, we start hearing stories about, oh, we had a class project that we had to do, and they didn't group by their classmates. They actually grouped by their classmates and reached out around the world to other professors, other students, to help them solve the problems that they needed to solve. So we can get through the filter bubble of ourselves by thinking about how data can find other collectives that we might be interested in that can help us be better people, that can help us be better as a society. And the third thing I'd like to talk about is this notion of hyper-differentiation. We see a lot of different kinds of devices coming out on the marketplace, but we also see that those devices are integrally related to the data that they collect or the data they use. What we need to start thinking about is how we can weave together the data and devices from the design process starting forward so that we can create devices and data together that are holistic, that help us in the flow of our daily lives, that don't give us something else we have to manage. In short, if I have to sum up, and I do, I'd like to think about the promise of a personal data economy built on the foundation of big data, recognizing that big data is ours. It's by the people and of the people. And to be a little bit cliche, it has to work for the people. Thanks. To find out more about this, uh, go to our booth, intel.com slash big data, and for extra credit, go to wethedata.org. Thank you.